Registering with GST is a simple two-stage process consisting of Part A and Part B of the registration application. This video will introduce you to Part A of the registration application. To begin, access the GST website www.gst.gov.in. From the home page, open the Services menu. Click the Registration category and select New Registration option. Note that the fields marked with a red color dot are mandatory fields. Select New Registration and provide your basic information including the permanent account number PAN. Make sure to enter a valid email address and Indian mobile phone number since the GST portal will communicate one-time passwords, OTPs and notifications at this address and mobile phone number. Clicking Proceed will send two different OTPs on your mobile and email address. On the next page, enter the OTP received on mobile phone number in the mobile OTP field and the one received in the email in the email OTP field and click Proceed. This will complete Part A of the registration application and will generate a temporary reference number TRN. It's that simple. Note down this TRN. It will be used to fill the Part B of registration application. We'll see that in the next video. This video will introduce you to Part B of the registration application. To begin, access the GST website www.gst.gov.in. From the home page, open the Services menu. Click the Registration category and select New Registration option. Select the Temporary Reference Number option and enter the TRN that was generated on submitting Part A of the registration application. Enter the CAPTCHA as usual and click Proceed. This will trigger an OTP. Enter the OTP received and proceed further. Notice the status of the registration application shows as Draft. Go ahead and click the Edit icon. Part B has 10 sections, with each section containing multiple fields that need to be filled up. Make sure to fill out all the mandatory fields, otherwise you will not be able to complete Part B. You get 15 days to fill and submit this application. In the Business Details section, provide the basic details of your business. Be careful when you select the Constitution of Business from the available options. Click the link to find out your central jurisdiction. Fill out rest of the fields and add information about your existing GST registrations, if any. Click Save and continue to save this information. Notice the Business Details section's color has now changed to blue and also has a tick on it, indicating the section is filled. You can now navigate to any section of the application and start filling the application. In the Promoter or Partners section, enter the personal information identity information and the residential address of the partner or promoter. In case of director, enter the director identification number allotted by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Next, upload the photograph of the person whose information is provided. Make sure the photograph is in JPEG format and size is less than 
100 KB. In the Other Information section, select the slider to Yes if this person needs to be an authorized signatory also. Let's keep it as No for now. The next section allows entering details of the authorized signatories. Set the primary authorized signatory and enter relevant personal information. Provide identity information, residential address with PIN code and upload necessary proof of authorization as signatory along with a photograph. Make sure the photograph is in JPEG format and size is less than 100 KB. You can add multiple authorized signatories by clicking the Add New button and adding the details. Click Save and Continue to save this information. In the next section, you may enter details of any authorized representative if desired. Else, move to the next section, Principal Place of Business. Here, provide the address of your business premises, the contact information of the given location, nature of possession of the premise, and a document that supports this information. Make sure the document is in PDF or JPEG format and size is less than 1 MB. In case of the principal place of business is neither on rent nor on premise, Select the other option and upload a no objection certificate NOC from the owner of the premises. Next, enter the nature of your business. Similarly, add the details of additional place of business in case you carry out business from multiple premises. Move on to the next section on goods and services related information. In this section, provide information related to five primary goods and services that you supply. Enter the name of the goods and services and the HSN Harmonized System of Nomenclature Code will be displayed. Move on to the next section on bank accounts. This section requires the details of at least one bank account that you are using for business purposes. Once you fill out the bank details, upload a supporting document such as the scanned copy of a cancelled check leaf, the account statement or a copy of the passbook's first page. You may add more than one account also if you want. Link to find the IFSE code of the bank. In the next section, you may provide any state specific information if desired. Else, you can jump to the last section of the application to verify that the information furnished is true and correct to have a legal binding. Once done, submit the application. For companies and limited liability partnerships, LLPs, it is mandatory to submit the application using the PAN-based Class 2 or 3 Digital Signature Certificate, DSC. But before submitting the application using DSC, the DSC needs to be registered using the Register DSC service on the portal. Alternatively, the application can be submitted using the e-sign or electronic verification code EVC option. Both these services are Aadhaar-based services 
and require you to have the mobile phone number registered with the Aadhaar database handy. In case of EVC, you will need to enter the OTP for authentication. Agree to the warning message which says that all your furnished information is subject to verification and scrutiny. Upon successfully submitting Part B of the registration application, an acknowledgement reference number ARN will be displayed as well as sent on your mobile phone number and email address. If you go to the Saved Applications section in the GST portal and find your submitted application, you will notice that the status has changed to Pending for Verification. It's that simple. Enrollment with GST is a simple two-stage process consisting of Part A and Part B of the registration application. This video will introduce you to Part A of the registration application. To begin, access the GST website www.gst.gov.in. From the home page, open the Services menu, click the Registration category and select New Registration option. Note that the fields marked with a red color dot are mandatory fields. Select New Registration and GST Practitioner. Provide your basic information, including the permanent account number, PAN. Make sure to enter a valid email address and Indian mobile phone number since the GST portal will communicate one-time passwords, OTPs and notifications at this address and mobile phone number. Clicking Proceed will send two different OTPs on your mobile and email address. On the next page, enter the OTP received in the email in the email OTP field and the one received on mobile phone number in the mobile OTP field and click Proceed. This will complete Part A of the enrollment application and will generate a temporary reference number TRN. Note down this TRN to fill the Part B of the enrollment application, click Proceed. Enter the TRN that was generated on submitting Part A of the registration application. Enter the CAPTCHA as usual and click Proceed. This will trigger an OTP. Enter the OTP received and proceed further. Notice the status of the registration application shows as draft. Go ahead and click the edit icon. Part B has four sections with each section containing multiple fields that need to be filled up. Make sure to fill out all the mandatory fields otherwise you will not be able to complete Part B. You get 15 days to fill and submit this application. In the General Details section, provide your basic qualification details. Begin by selecting if you want to register under the Central or State or Union Territory Enrolling Authority. Based on the selection, the application will be sent to corresponding approving authority. You can enroll as GST practitioner only if you hold one of the desired qualification or if you are a retired government officer. Select the university or institute, year of passing and qualifying degree for enrollment as a GST practitioner.
in case of CA or CS or CMA, enter the membership details including membership type, number and date. Upload a document supporting your qualification or proof of you being a retired government officer. Make sure the document is in PDF or JPEG format and of size up to 100 KB. Click Save and Continue to save this information. Notice the General Details section's color has now changed to blue and also has a tick on it indicating the section is filled. You can now navigate to any section of the application and start filling the application. In the Applicant Details section, enter the personal information like name, date of birth, father's name, gender, permanent account number, PAN, Aadhaar, and landline number. Notice the mobile phone number and email address are pre-filled as entered in the Part A of the application. Next, upload the photograph. Make sure the photograph is in JPEG format and size is less than 100 KB. Click the Save and Continue button. The next section allows entering the professional address. Provide professional address with PIN code and upload necessary proof of address. Make sure the document is in PDF or JPEG format and size is less than 1 MB. In case the professional address is neither on rent nor own premise, select the consent letter option and upload a no objection certificate NOC from the owner of the premises. Once done, verify the application. You can submit the application using PAN-based Class 2 or 3 Digital Signature Certificate, DSC, but before submitting the application using DSC, the DSC needs to be registered using the Register DSC service on the portal. Alternatively, the application can be submitted using the e-sign or electronic verification code EVC option. Both these services are Aadhaar based service and require you to have the mobile phone number registered with the Aadhaar database handy. In case of EVC, you will need to enter the OTP for authentication. Agree to the warning message, which says that all your furnished information is subject to verification and scrutiny. Upon successfully submitting Part B of the registration application, an acknowledgement reference number ARN will be sent on your mobile phone number and email address. It's that simple. After you have submitted the registration application, it can be approved or rejected by tax official. Alternatively, tax official can raise a query and seek clarification. This video will guide you on how you can file a clarification to such queries raised by the tax official. To begin, access the GST website www.gst.gov.in. From the home page, Open the Services menu, click the Registration category, 
and select New Registration option. Select the Temporary Reference Number option and enter the TRN that was generated on submitting Part A of the registration application. Enter the CAPTCHA as usual and click Proceed. This will trigger an OTP. Enter the OTP received and proceed further. Notice the status of the registration application shows as pending for clarification. Go ahead and click the pending for clarification link. The notice with the query raised by the tax official will be downloaded and displayed. Read the notice and note the application reference number ARN. Now you can access the registration application to provide the clarification using this ARN. Open the services menu. Click the registration category and select application for filing clarification option. Enter the ARN and click search. The query raised by the tax official is displayed. Provide your response to the query raised. Provide any additional information that you may want to provide to the tax official. You can attach the document based on the query raised. Make sure the document is in PDF or JPEG format and of size up to 1 MB. Once done, verify the clarification. Select the name of the authorized signatory and submit the clarification using PAN-based Class 2 or 3 Digital Signature Certificate DSC in case of Company or Limited Liability Partnership LLP. But before submitting the clarification using DSC, the DSC needs to be registered using the Register DSC service on the portal. In case other than Company and LLP, the clarification can be submitted using the e-sign or electronic verification code EVC option as well. Both these services are Aadhaar-based services and require you to have the mobile phone number registered with the Aadhaar database handy. In case of EVC, you will need to enter the OTP for authentication. Agree to the warning message which says that all your furnished information is subject to verification and scrutiny. Upon successfully submitting the clarification, an acknowledgement reference number, ARN, will be displayed as well as sent on your mobile phone number and email address. It's that simple. Taxpayers can opt for composition scheme either while making a fresh registration on the GST portal or after enrolling or registering as a normal taxpayer. This video will walk you through the steps to opt for the composition scheme after enrolling or registering to GST as a normal taxpayer. To begin, access the GST website www.gst.gov.in. From the home page, Open the Services menu, click the Registration category and select the Application to Opt for Composition Scheme option. On the next page that opens, scroll down and read the Composition Declaration Statement as well as the Verification Statement carefully. Once done, go ahead and check the boxes given against these statements. Next, select the name of authorized signatory 
and enter the place of business. The designation of authorized signatory and the date field will get auto-populated. The next step is to sign the application using either of the three given options. If the application is being submitted by a company or a limited liability partnership LLP firm, then you must use the DSC option. Otherwise, if you are an individual taxpayer or a proprietor, you may sign either by using a DSC or e-sign or EVC mode. Assuming that you want to sign using a DSC, click the Submit with DSC button. Accept the warning message. Select a DSC and click the Sign button. The system will display a success message as shown to confirm the submission. It's that simple.